Hello all, welcome to another edition of the Citizen NFL Podcast. I'm here with Robert Harding and Chris Shearer. This is Justin Ritzel. Guys, what a week of football for some of us Yeah, that I, weren't at the Dolphins game. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't see much of it because I was at the Dolphins game down in New Jersey and then I was driving back and uh, I did see some of the Raiders in the, in the, in the, in the Washington team there. So yeah. I told Chris on Monday, I was like, man, that was a tough tough day to be at a game because there was so many good games yeah going on uh there was at least five games that went right down to the wire for one o'clock and i know i was with my you know sunday ticket i was flipping back and forth between all of them and uh definitely a a good weekend of football which i think we all needed um robert your bills i think a surprising surprising win over (coughs) i picked them the denver broncos uh clearly the biggest story that game is Von Miller doing the uh, oh here I'll give you a hand psych yeah to Tyrod Taylor yeah that was that was lame the, the <laughs> fifteen yard penalty and uh, that, there were there were some questionable officiating in, the, in that game on both sides I must say but uh, but yeah good win for for my Bills and uh, the co leaders of the AFC East uh, oh look, you know he looks at me when he <laughs> says that and smiles. We're, what? We're, so, we're some of us st- can, hey, can hey, actually hey, beat the Jets. Hold on. What's it? My my watch says it's still September. It is. You're in first place. Come December, then you can look at me and smile and grin and everything. Okay. Let's let's just hold off on the uh, you know the celebrating here. Okay. And by the way, I did pick the Broncos to lose to your Bills last week. I'm I'm the only one who picked the Broncos to lose that game. Okay. So give me a little little props for that. All right. Sure. I don't, I get a few right now and then. Chris, who'd you pick between the Dolphins and the Jets? <laughs> Come on, I think ninety nine percent of the population <laughs> picked the Dolphins in that game. Hey, it was it was a hey, look. The quote, the coach, garbage. I mean, their offense was utter garbage. They couldn't block. I don't know what was going on with Cutler. I mean, there was a couple of plays where I thought he could have tucked it in, ran for a first down. He decides to throw it and and completely off target. Um, you know, but I'm just not going to blame the offense either. The defense had some lapses too. I mean, I'm not expecting them to pitch to shut out, but you know, there were some plays the defense I think could have played better, and um, it was it was not a good game, obviously. And uh, you know, I'm I'm sorry the Jets are still an NFL team. They're still professionals, and they're going to play hard. And they did, and they 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 definitely deserved a win. And it wasn't a fluke. They deserved a win, and um, Miami deserved to lose that game. They played like absolute like the coach said, garbage. All right, so. For three weeks into the season, um, I, I'm of the mindset that really September is more like an extended preseason these days, but you still kind of see how the league is a little bit coming into focus. We kind of have an idea of who's good, who's not, um, maybe some surprise teams. Uh, I figured we could play a little game. Oh, boy. And she, I've called, she I'm, likes games. I'm Ooh. calling this game Panic or Patience. Mm. Okay. So I've got three teams from each conference. I'm going to list off, and you guys are going to tell me, should this team panic, or should they have patience? Interesting. I'm ready for this. I'm going to start on the AFC with the 0-3 Cincinnati Bengals. Mm. Panic or patience? I think they've already panicked because they fired the offensive coordinator and, and, and made Bill Lazor the interim offensive coordinator. So they, they're already panicking. And, uh, I mean, they look, They gave Green Bay a good game and everything. That's, that's a tough place. I mean, you look, you know, Lambeau's a tough place to win and everything. Uh, so I think the Bengals have already started panicking because they fired a coach, a coordinator, I should say. Um, so that's panic right there. But, and I'm going to preface this saying that there's only three, it's only three weeks into the season here. A lot of things can change. A lot of stuff can happen. So I, I would say that for the Bengals... It's both. They've already panicked and fired an offensive coordinator, but they need to show patience that maybe they can get it together. There's still plenty of time left. So, I'll say patience for now. I think it all depends on how things play out against the Browns uh, this weekend. Uh, you know, the Bengals have been in some close ones. Uh, 
the Packers game, obviously, uh, the most recent example. But uh, before that, the Texans game was close. I mean, they, they were right in that. So um, they just couldn't execute offensively. And that's really their, their biggest problem right now. And, um, you know, the offense seemed to have a little spark uh, against the Packers. So we'll see if they can. Uh, well, doesn't everybody? Well, wow. you know. I mean, come on. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, I, I do think that, uh, you know, 0 and 3, there is cause for concern there, especially in the AFC and especially in that division. I mean, you're talking uh, some, some tough foes there with, you know, even Cleveland and uh, the way that they're kind of, you know, the, they're younger, but they're on the rise. And then you obviously have the Ravens and Steelers to deal with, too. So it's not going to be an easy road for them if they're, uh, they're going to come back and try to make a run in the playoffs. I would say anytime your team is quarterbacked by Andy Dalton, it's time for panic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. Ouch. The 1-2 and two Houston Texans. The reason I included these guys, um, they obviously were right on the cusp of upsetting the Patriots in New England, but they are 1-2, and two, and it looks like uh, the, t- the Tennessee Titans are for, for real, and the Jacksonville Jaguars are for real. So mm-hmm. that division... No, 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 no. No, hey, no. you you win a game by forty points. No, I don't no, care who no, you are. You're, you're... That game was in London. Okay, it's the Jags. Okay, look, the Jags are a better team. I know we're kind of deviating from the script yeah. here. The Jags <laughs> are an improved team from last year, no doubt about it. Okay, but let's not let's not say these guys are contenders yet. I know I didn't not... say they were contenders. Um, I, I'm saying the division is better than we thought. I mm-hmm. I'm not ready to say the Jaguars are have arrived yet. They they've got a few more things to show me before that. So maybe maybe beating the Jets on the road would be a start. Yeah. Huh? Now for Tennessee, uh, panic or patience for the Houston ten- Texans. Texans. <laughs> okay, for the Texans, I would say patience. I mean, you got a rookie quarterback. This kid has talent. He's showing some things. We already know they have a very good defense. Never, it's never easy to beat New England anywhere, any place, any time. So I, I would say patience. I, I agree. You know, I think they, I mean, they they competed pretty well uh, in New England. Of course, just mentioned a little while ago, they, they beat the Bengals. Uh, you know, I think the way that that, de- that division could play out, I mean, it's going to be tough. You know, as you mentioned, Jacksonville's playing better. Uh, the Doug Marone effect, I'd like to say. Um, <laughs> you know, the Colts, you know, who knows what's up with them? You know, who knows when Andrew Luck's coming yeah. back? So, they're kind of the dud of the, the division right now. But, um, you know, I think uh, the, the way that the Texans are playing, you know, there's uh, there's some cause for celebration there. You know, good young quarterback. You know, the defense is the defense. Uh, you know, they have some good weapons on offense. So, you know, they're a team that's capable of, you know, making a, a, a charge for maybe a wild card spot or something. Uh, I think Tennessee is just too too good. I don't think they'll... They'll lose the division, but you know the way that the AFC is playing out, I think they they could be in contention for a wild card spot. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I'll go with patience on on the Texans. Uh, last team for the AFC, the we're not from San Diego anymore, Los Angeles Chargers, who are 0 three mm-hmm. and 0 three in heartbreaking fashion. Uh, panic or patience for the LA Chargers? I say uh, I say panic, uh, given that division. Uh, that's not going to be an easy division for them. Uh, you've got the Raiders, you've got the Broncos, uh, you know, they've lost to, I think, two of their three uh, AFC West foes already, um, so, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a difficult road for them if they're going to make a charge and come back to uh, uh, qualify for the playoffs. Make a charge, you say? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say in- patience. Intentional pun. I'm going to say patience. Uh, go figure. I don't think they're going to win the division, but I still think they have a chance for a wild card because you think about it, they missed two late field goals that they could easily be two and one. So I think this team does have talent. It's still there's still like I said, plenty of time to turn things around. It's going to be tough, no doubt about it. But I mean, they're going to have to basically break even against the division for the rest of the year and then feast on the out of division games. And you know, I mean, they could finish nine and seven and sneak in with a wild card. But yeah, they've got to start turning it around soon. But I would say patience for the Chargers. As someone who picked the Chargers to win the division, yes, I am in full panic mode. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't bring that up. But again, see, here's the thing. It's so easy to overreact this time, the time of year. I mean, look. Look at the Dolphins, for example. They lose. They're 1-1. One and one. But the way some fans are reacting, it's like they're 0-2 oh and, and they, you know. It, look, the, like I said, they played like garbage last weekend. But 
there's still 14 games left. There's a lot of football left. Things can change. I mean, you know, but they've got to change. That's the thing. If they keep playing the way they've been playing, they're in trouble. So, and that's for any NFL team. You can get off to a slow start. And st- I mean, look, Miami was 1-4 last year, and they barely beat them. They should have lost to the Browns. They should have been 0-5. They still finished 10-6, made a wild card. So there's plenty of time for the for the Los Angeles Chargers to uh, turn things around and maybe sneak in with a wild card. Well, rumors are they might not be the L.A. Chargers for much longer. I hope they go back to San Diego. That's the right thing to do. I mean, I it's ridiculous. They never should have left to begin with. I mean... If the Spanos family, if they can't dig up the money, especially because the NFL has money for these guys to build stadiums, and find some place in San Diego, the you know that area, and build a stadium, or just keep playing at the old Jack Murphy Stadium, I mean, it's not new or fancy, but I, I guarantee you the Chargers were not losing money in that stadium. I'm I'm sorry, they were not losing money in that stadium. So, you know, I hope they go back. All right, let's shift over to the NFC. Three more teams here. Let's start with the 0-3 New York Giants. I knew that was coming. Panic or patience with the New York well, football Giants? That's that's panic. I mean, because they've looked horrible, and when your best player is acting like a dog when he scores a <laughs> touchdown, I mean, I'm sorry, man. That shows you that McAdoo is, you know, he doesn't have control of this team. Oh, boy. And, and, and I'm sorry, man. You can't. I mean, Beckham just needs to grow up, man. He obviously is has maturity issues. And, uh, you know, so when you're playing in New York and you're getting all that endorsement money, doing all those commercials, you know, it's easy to, for your head to get inflated that I can do whatever I want, no ramifications, and that's what's going on here. The guy needs to start playing with some class, maturity, and discipline because the Giants need that right now. So I would say panic because their defense hasn't played well either. So I mean they're all, they're in an own three hole and that's tough to climb out of and um, and that division too because the Redskins are playing great, the Eagles are yeah, everybody else team. is two and one and Dallas yeah so I mean they're they're really in trouble so I would say panic. Well, uh, I I had no problem with uh, Odell Beckham Jr. celebration. Really, I thought it was great. You think it was great? Creative. Creative, yeah. acting like a dog urinating. I thought it was funny. Come on. If if I had a kid and my kid was an Odell Beckham fan, I would be very disappointed. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. There's just, I, I just, I'm a, maybe it's because I'm the old guy here in the room, but to me, when you score a touchdown, if you want to celebrate, great. If you want to spike the ball, you want to do a dance, whatever, man. But to act like a dog Whip taking a, a whiz. Whip out a shard. Uh, yeah, you know. I mean, <laughs> oh, there is a line. Okay. But then, well, I'm sorry. When you do, <laughs> when you do things like pretend to urinate. What if he had? What if he had simulated a an adult act? Okay, which I will not go into detail here. But what if he had done something like? Are you that? referring to a twerk? <laughs> well, more than a twerk. I'll tell you that. It rhymes with twerk. Um, and, and that's the now R rated citizen yeah, after know, podcast, citizen after dark podcast. <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm sorry. I just think that there's a line here that you don't simulate things like bodily functions in, in a public place, public setting in a game with thousands of people watching you and millions of you, millions of people watching on TV, low class, degrading, horrible. And I, I tell you this, I would suspend him for a game without pay. Oh, boy. I'm that's serious. Ex- that's Send a message. <laughs> Send a message that nobody is above this. I'm serious. Wow. Suspend him. I'm not making jokes. Suspend him for a game. That is an absolute disgrace and embarrassment. If, if you're looking for appropriate suspension from an NFL team, probably New York Giants aren't the best. Ones. I don't think John Mara is. Yeah. I, I know John Mara is not happy about it. Well, you know, owners are owners, but yeah. In terms of the Giants, though, uh, I I would say panic, uh, given where they are at, where they're at in that division, and uh, much like the Chargers in the AFC West, you know, the the NFC East is pretty good right now. The Eagles are two and one. Uh, Cowboys are two and one. Washington is uh, uh, up there too, and they they're coming off a big win over Oakland, so. The Giants are in some trouble, and uh, they're going to need. They've lost two of their three games to uh, uh, AFC or NFC East foes, so they're they're in some real trouble there. Who, who would have thought that going into October, that the New York team with the best record would be the Jets? Yeah, you mean New Jersey? No, yeah, technically they play <laughs> New Jersey, but they do identify themselves as New York teams. So sure. Yeah, I think I think the Giants were the biggest layup here out of all the teams I've got listed. Yeah. Uh, 
Aside from you know Chris's thoughts on Odell Beckham, uh, <laughs> sorry. On on the field, I mean they they just look. The, what's what's their go to right now? What are they good at right now? I mean their defense isn't as good as it was last year. No running game. They, they no can't game. block. They can't run, which they really couldn't do last year. And Eli's a year older, and he's playing like it. You know he, he wasn't very good last year, and he has picked up right where he left off. So uh, if if I'm the Giants, I'm I'm not only worried about where this season's going, but I'm worried about where my team is going to be next year because should have kept Ryan Nassib. Well, they they need he's to be not, well, that's right, he's with the Jags. If if they lose another couple games here, they need to seriously think about okay, this isn't our season. There's a strong quarterback draft Tank. coming up. Oh, do we God. you know, do we need to look at getting our next franchise quarterback? Jets so. and Giants picking number 1 and 2 in the draft. Hey, next you year. know, That'd it's, it's possible. Good thing the draft isn't in New York anymore. Holy cow. Oh my God, that'd be hilarious. All right, so I got another team here. They only played two games. Their first game, they looked like the best team in the NFL. Uh, last weekend, they looked like one of the worst teams. The one and one Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who got their butts kicked in Minnesota. Panic or patience? Panic. Uh, this is this is the Dolphins, man. This is the whole the Hurricane Irma. It screwed these two teams up. I mean, it really screwed them up. And uh, and and I, again, a lot of people were saying the Buccaneers were going to be the the surprise. I'm say the surprise team, but this was the team that was supposed to take the next step this year because they played well at the end of last season. And you know, Jameis Winston was supposed to take a step up, and he hasn't. I I think again, tying it in with the Dolphins, the, the Hurricane, and not playing that first weekend, it really screwed up these teams having to take their bye week now. And for the Dolphins having to go out to the West Coast, it, it, it screwed them up even more. So I think there's a, there's a hurricane hangover, for, for lack of a better way of saying it. So, and, and, you know, if you watched Hard Knocks, I mean, this team, I mean, they showed that there was, um, you know, that, there, that, that this team really needed to play smart if they were going to be competitive. And they're not playing smart right now, especially Winston. So... You know, you got Gerald McCoy who's like telling fans like, "Hey, just stop by the the team complex there, and I'll and I'll talk with anybody here if you if you got an issue with my play." I mean, that's that's not good, man. When you got your players doing things like that, that that shows you that like, hey, this team is, you know, they're panicking. There's no there's no doubt about it. So yeah, I say panic. I'm going with patience. Uh, you know, Minnesota is, even though Case Keenum. Uh, lighting you up doesn't really speak well for your <laughs> yeah, defense. That's, that's bad. But, yeah. uh, you know, Minnesota is is a better team than people realize. And, and that was a road game for, for the Buccaneers. So uh, Minnesota's defense is pretty good. You know, they have some decent weapons, including that receiving core. So losing to the Vikings on the road isn't, uh, I don't think, is, is a reason for concern yet. I think the, the biggest test really for them will come uh, in the division and uh, – We'll see how they do there, but uh, you know I think for right now, you know this was their first loss. They did have that you know good game week two, so you know we'll see we'll see what happens. But uh, uh, as someone who picked the Buccaneers to advance to the playoffs, I'm I'm not I'm not worried yet. So yeah, I'm going to go with patience here, uh, but I will say uh, it's always been a concern of mine with Jameis that he's just going to throw those those dumb interceptions where you know he's. It's like those Favre interceptions where you just you see the play and you're like, what the hell was he thinking? Mm-hmm. He had a few of those against Minnesota. I, I just don't think you can go f- ultimately get to where you want to go with guys like that. Not not in this NFL. And then, you know, you, you mentioned what Case Keenum did to them. Uh, look at the quarterbacks in that division. They are going to face some tough ones this year. So when they see Matt Ryan, when they see Drew Brees, uh, Cam Newton is obviously not playing well, but um, who knows if he turns it around. The Bucks need to prove that they can – if they can stop decent quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. So I'll stick with patience, but um, that, that one's a tough one for me. Uh, the last one I got here was a very popular uh, Super Bowl pick for the mm-hmm. NFC. Um, the 1-2 and two Seattle Seahawks. Yes. Panic or patience? Panic. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Remember, this was, uh, there was a, during the offseason, there was an ESPN.com story that talked about the issues in the locker room going back to the Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. And, you know, there was talk that Richard Sherman was going to be traded. Um, you know, and then they have, a, they have a horrible offensive line. Okay? And that, I think that's the number one thing that's the issue with this team is the offensive line. 
So I would say the Seahawks are an older team. It's a year older, even though they still have a pretty good quarterback who's in his prime when you, when you think about it, that, you know, Russell Wilson is, is in his prime and everything. But, I mean, you know, quarterback can only do so much if he can't, if he doesn't get any blocking and he doesn't have a running game. So, like I said, I, I, think, I think they're in panic mode. I, I think the Seahawks do not make the playoffs this year. I'm going with patience on this one. Uh, just given that division, uh, you know, you've got you've got the L.A. Rams, you've got the 49ers. Uh, Rams are an improved team. Sure, sure, but I, I I don't think that they have improved to the extent where they're going to be legitimate contenders in that division quite yet. I think they still have some some pieces to put together, but. Um, uh, you know the Cardinals too have have their struggles, uh, and so you know I think the Seahawks. Uh, you know in the past they've uh, they've had some of these seasons where they get off to a slow start. I'm thinking of one. Uh, I don't think it was last year. I think it was two years ago when they started three and three, and you know the the thinking then was all oh, you know this is the decline of the Seahawks, and it was after you know they had some uh, f- they lost some players in free agency, and they ended up making the playoffs and being a serious contender again. So, you know, I think, uh, I think you know, with this team, you have to be patient uh, to see, you know, what happens. You know, they still have Russell Wilson. They still have a lot of great players on defense. You know, they're, this is a veteran team that can turn it around. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we, we could come back in, in another month or so and see where they stand. But for now, I'm, I'm waiting this out. Yeah, I, I mean, think they can improve. They so, could. They could. Quick, they, Chris, I'm yeah. curious because you said you don't think they're going to the playoffs. So you are on. Are you on the Rams bandwagon? No, I'm not on the Rams bandwagon. Somebody's got to win I the guess, division. You know, the thing is, they could win the division. There's, there's no doubt about it. But I think that this, they, they need to start showing signs of progress here. And again, and when you don't have a good offensive line, it's tough to do. So we'll see what happens. But you know, I, I, I guess it's too early to say the Rams are a contender right now. I mean, for that division, not saying contend in the playoffs, but. But sneaking that division, I still think Arizona. You know that that's a team that it's got two a great wide receiver in Fitzgerald and, and Carson Palmer. I mean, eh. I mean you can tell he's getting towards the end, but he's still got a little bit left in him. That if that team can straighten some things out, they 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 could win that division. But it's going to be tough though. That should have been another team on my list: Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. yeah at the Seahawks. Yeah, I think um, I, I'm a little more on Robert's side here. Uh, just because we've seen it year after year where it seems like they're starting slow and they end up making the playoffs and being one of the top teams. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that offensive line is definitely a concern, uh, especially if, you know, with Russell Wilson's health. Uh, him being hurt last year kind of derailed their chances. And um, it, it's alarming that Tennessee kind of moved the ball mm-hmm. on them at will. That That shouldn't happen for a defense that I think many – Heading into the year after they acquired Sheldon Richardson, uh, probably talent-wise, people thought was the best in the league. So uh, I'll say patience, but I could easily see myself flipping the switch on that in a couple weeks. But, yeah, so that does it for panic or patience. What would you guys think of my, my game? I, I, I love this segment. Oh, it was pretty good. Yeah. We get uh, Shearer's hot takes on touchdown celebrations every week. I know. that's That might have to be the topic uh, next week. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I'm going to rant sometimes. It happens. (laughs) Chris hates Odell Beckham. No, I don't hate Odell Beckham. (laughs) I don't like people pretending that they're, you know, urinating when they score a touchdown. I just think it's vulgar and low class. All right, let's not dance around the real topic. What? The the national anthem situation. We got to talk about this? If you guys want to, I, I didn't. <laughs> is that on the list? I mean, is. uh, No, I I didn't have it written down. I've, I've, I've spent a lot of. Thought on it because I'm actually that's what my column is on this week. Oh, no spoilers then. You want uh, to steal the thunder? Yeah. Right? If you guys want to share your thoughts, by all means. That's all right. We'll we'll save it for next week. The Bills going down to Atlanta and picking up a win? No, no. I. It, it will be interesting because they're they're going to be without two of their top defensive players. So what will that mean for the offense? I will be interested to see though how prepared the defense is, given that McDermott has experience uh, going up against these guys t- two times a year uh, from his days in Carolina. But um, you know, it's it's a, you're talking about the the team that should have won last year's Super Bowl. Uh, you know, they still have a lot of those same weapons. Uh, that's a potent offense to go up against, and then the defense is pretty good too. So. 
Um, no Vic Beasley. Right. Don't have to worry about him. Right. So it's going to be a, a tough test uh, for them. But, uh, yeah, I, I think the Falcons will win, uh, will win comfortably on Sunday. Uh, the often pessimistic Robert Harding. Indeed. Life of a Bills fan, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Well, you know, you got you got your moment in the sun last weekend against the Broncos. So. Indeed. All right. We'll sign off from there. This has been another edition of the Citizen NFL Podcast. Robert Harding, Chris Shearer, and Justin Ritzel. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.